Hello, welcome to this video. In this video and in the upcoming videos, we'll talk in great length about memory references and optimizations. But before we dive in deep about memory references, let us talk a bit about how variables are stored inside of the memory heap. Let's assume that this tag over here is a drop box where variables are stored. Each variable inside of the memory heap is stored as an object. Here, object 1 takes up one slot in the memory heap and has a raw memory address of sequence of characters which is in hexadecimal format. We all know that computer internally operates with binary formats and the address here doesn't seem to be one of a binary type. Addresses are stored in binary format, but as the addresses get lengthy and to save space, it prints out in hexadecimal format. Here, object 1 has a physical address to 0x10a544f88. Here, 0x indicates that this is in hexadecimal format. Object 2 occupies one slot and has a memory address of 0x10a544f89. Object 3 occupies two slots in the memory, memory heap and has an address of 0x10a544f90. Object 4 occupies three slots inside of the memory heap and has an address of 0x10a544f91. The allocation of slots to a variable depends on the size of your variable. The variable stacking up inside of the memory is called a heap. This entire thing is called a heap and this heap is managed by the JavaScript memory manager. Technically, it is handled by the browser's memory manager. If you are using Google Chrome, V8 handles the memory. If you are using Mozilla Firefox, SpiderMonkey handles the memory. And if you are using Internet Explorer, it's Chakra that's handling the memory for you. For our example purposes, we shall assume that this tag is the JavaScript memory manager and, and the retrieval and the storage of variables are handled by the JavaScript memory manager. Most commonly, modern systems are byte accessible, which means one memory location stores one byte. One byte is 8 bits. Here, object 1 consumes one byte, object 3 consumes two bytes and object 4 consumes 3 bytes. Object 3 consumes 2 bytes and object 4 consumes 3 bytes. Okay, now let us go through a quick example. Let me go to the next slide. Okay, here 2019 is assigned to the variable my number and hello JavaScript, the sequence of strings is assigned to the variable my string. My number has a reference to the memory address 0x10a544f88 and is stored as object 1 inside of the memory heap. Cool. For the sake of argument, you might say that the number in JavaScript is a double precision and uses 64 bits, that is 8 bytes. We'll talk about integers in great detail in the upcoming videos. Only for the sake of illustrating an example, I'm showing it as it takes up one slot, but in practicality, it uses 8 bits. That is 8 bytes, I'm sorry. My string as a reference to this address 0x10a544f89 and is stored inside of the memory heap occupying two slots as object 2. Cool. Now, that's it for this uh, slide, but I wish there was a way to show a practical example of how variables are getting stored in the JavaScript memory manager. Unfortunately, JavaScript's implementations are only standardized in so much as they follow the ECMAScript specifications. The intricacies of memory storage could differ by browser and are not made accessible to JavaScript. Let us take a diversion from JavaScript and look at how Python stores variables inside of the Python manager, which is going to deepen our understanding. Let's see the Python implementation in the next video. I'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome to this video. In the last lecture, we discussed about how variables are stored inside of the memory heap. I also mentioned that we'll be taking a diversion from JavaScript and we'll look We'll have a look at how Python memory manager stores variables. You need not follow along with me in this lecture. This demonstration is only going to help you deepen the understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. We'll be traversing from JavaScript to Python in this module quite a bit. 
and I am sure you'll appreciate this traversal by the end of this module. Just because I am using Python to demonstrate an example doesn't mean that this memory management is only applicable to Python. The concepts that we are going through are the same in JavaScript as well. I already have a file in Python for our illustration. So let's dive right into the code and have a look at the output. Here 2019 is assigned to the variable my number and we are printing the physical address of my number inside of the Python memory manager. Here we are using the id method to print out the physical address of my number and we are using the hex method to display the memory address in an hexadecimal format. When I run the file I get the output and we can see the memory address. Let me run the file so that I can show you what the address is of the variable my number python memory references and when I hit enter we get the memory address of my number to be 0x7fceacc07e20. Cool. Now let, let me uncomment these two lines. Let me uncomment these lines as well. Okay. Now hello python from javascript is being assigned to the variable my string and we are printing out the id of my string as well and this is my variable the sequence of these characters are being assigned to the variable my my variable and we are printing out the uh, memory address of my variable as well let us run the file again let me clear the terminal and i'm running the file python memory references Okay, when I hit enter, we can see that we get the memory address of my string to be 0x10b947e88 and the memory address of my variable is 0x10b951538. Okay, let me go back to the code editor. Okay, now let us see what the memory address of my new number is going to be when we share the reference of the variable my number to it. Let me uncomment these four lines. Okay. Before I run the code, what do you think the memory address of my new number is going to be? I'll give you 5 seconds. Give it a shot. Done? Okay. Now let's see the output. When I, let me clear the terminal again and when I run the file, we can see that the memory address of my new number is exactly the same that of the address of my number. 0x7fc1 f3f01410 and 0x7fc1 f3f01410. These memory addresses are a mouthful. We can see that the memory addresses of my number and my new number are the same. Before we see why they share the same memory addresses, let me go back to the code editor and let us assign a new value to the variable my new number and let's see what the memory address is going to be this time. I'm going to un uncomment the last three lines and I'm going back to my terminal and I'm clearing the terminal. Okay. I'm going to run the file. But before I run the file, do you want to take a shot at what's going to happen? I'll give you two seconds. Okay, two seconds is way too less. I'll give you five seconds. Give it a try. Done. Okay. Is it going to have the same memory address of my number? If your answer was yes, then I have another question for you. Will the variable my number get assigned to the new value that we just assigned to the variable my new number? Okay, suppose if your answer was no to the first question, that is, is it going to have the same memory address of my number? Then I have another question for you. Will my new number get a new memory location in the heap? If your answer was yes, then you were right. Let's have a look at the output. Let me run the file. Okay, we can see that the memory address of my new number now changes to 0x7fa8d840ce68. It got a new memory address. That is my new number now was assigned to a new memory address and the memory address of my number is 0x7fa8d840cef50. We assigned a new value to the variable my new number and as uh, the strings are immutable, we get a new memory address inside of the memory heap. We'll look at mutability in the upcoming videos. Before we move on to the next video, there are essentially three phases in memory life and we just had a look at the first one. 
that is allocate the memory unit we are allocating the memory we require inside of the variable and we are referencing it we are referencing it with a memory address inside of the memory heap i'll point to the other two points when it's time now we shall see why they share the same memory address and why the memory addresses change when the values are changed in the next video i'll see you in the next video hello welcome to this video in the last video we saw how variables share same memory addresses and different memory addresses based on how the variables are assigned and referenced we stopped at why they share the same addresses that is same memory addresses when the variable my new number was assigned with the variable my number here the variable my number has a value of 2019 my new number and my number share the same memory addresses why is the question we had in the previous video we shall address this question with a solution in this video but we also add a different question in our previous lecture when we assign the value of 2020 that is a new value to the variable my new number my new number got a new memory location that is new memory address inside of the memory heap that is it got a new memory location inside of the memory heap and now as a different memory address before my new number and my number both had the same memory addresses that is my new number shared the same memory address that of my number but as soon as my new number got a different value my new number is no longer sharing the same memory address of my number it got separated my new number became independent and now it has a new memory address of its own these two questions will be answered in this video before answering the second question we shall see why my new number and my number share the same memory addresses let me go to the slide okay in this slide we have 2019 value assigned to the variable my number and my number as a place inside of the memory with an address of 545455 my number as a value of 2019 when we create a new variable and we are, when we assign it the value of my number that is when we assign the variable my number to the new variable that is my new number javascript doesn't give my new number a new place inside of the memory heap what it does is it's assigning the same memory address that of my number to the variable my new number here my number as an address of 5454545 my new number is also going to have the same address that of my number javascript is doing this by assigning the address of the variable my number and instead of allocating my new number a new address it tells my new number that 2019 is already stored in the memory and i am not going to waste my space by giving you a new place inside of the memory you'll have to share a reference with 2019 which is assigned to the variable my number do or die that's all you get i am not going to give you a place inside of the memory heap you might think why is javascript memory manager being so mean it does to increase performance and uses that space by allocating it to a different variable by freeing the memory in your operating system instead of allocating my new number the instead of allocating my new number with a new place inside of the memory heap it's going to give the space to a different variable which was declared or assigned with a new value you get the idea that's the reason why my new number and my new num my number and my new number are referencing to the same memory address 2019 is all my new number wants what javascript is saying is that 2019 is already being referred by the variable my number so why not use it because all you want is 2019 you get 2019 i am not going to give 2019 with a new memory address for you now coming to the second question as soon as my new number was assigned with a new value javascript memory manager instead of referencing my new number with the same memory address that it had before it gave it a new memory address javascript memory manager got disappointed and it gave it a new memory address but why was it given a new memory address is a real question it's not just with my new number if we declare a new value 
to the variable my new number let's say we are assigning it the value of 2020 that is my number is re getting reassigned with the value of 2019 plus 1 or my number plus 1 that is the value 2020 we might think that we are reassigning the variable my number by adding it one to it by adding it one to it the value 2019 now is getting reassigned with 2020 and so the memory gets a new place sorry the memory gets a new value and is replaced with 2020 here my number as an address of 54 54 54 with the value of 2019 we might think that the variable my number is going to have the same memory address but the value of 2019 is going to get replaced with 2020 but that's not happening my number is going to get a new memory address here in our example we chose the memory address to be 24 24 24 and the variable my number has the value of 2020 with a new memory address this is happening because in javascript primitive values are immutable and number is a primitive value and it is immutable that is the sole reason why my new number gets a new address and also when the variable is reassigned it gets a new address but with mutable objects that is different that is arrays and objects those are mutable objects here we have a variable of my array with the value of 1 2 3 and when we push the value of 4 into the array that is my array we get a new value that is 1 2 3 4 but the memory address is going to be the same only the internal state of the internal state of the memory address is going to change before the value of my array was 1 2 3 and it had a memory address of 0 x 2 8 2 8 2 8 with the value of 1 2 3 but as soon as we pushed the value of 4 we didn't get a new memory address it had the same memory address of 0 x 2 8 2 8 2 8 but the internal state of the memory address that is the internal state of the value instead of the memory address changed to 1 2 3 4 knowing when to use references can be a huge performance optimizer because instead of creating a new memory address for each push value that is instead of uh, getting a new memory address in inside of the memory heap we are having the same memory address but with different values this can be a performance optimizer when we use the mutable objects wisely in the last video i briefly touched on the topic three stages of memory life cycle we allocated variables inside of the memory which was one stage of memory life cycle that is allocate the memory you need and when you use the allocated memory like sharing the references for example is the second stage of memory life cycle that is use the allocated memory and now we are slowly moving toward the third stage that is release the allocated memory when it is not needed anymore to understand the third stage we'll speak about the naive reference counting garbage collection but before we go and start talking about garbage collection let us take a while and talk a bit about reference counting what is reference counting reference counting allows you to keep track of your reference objects created by your code on the memory heap and allows you to keep track of how many references are still active when the reference count goes to zero you can safely free the memory used by the object it is a way to implement basic garbage collection but as said we shall talk about garbage collection in great detail when we are done understanding reference counting let us have a look at an illustration <clears throat> okay here we are assigning an array to a variable a which has a length of 3 with values a b and c variable a as a reference to a memory address of 0x 161612cf48 so the count of reference counter goes to 1 because the variable a is being referenced to the memory of 0x 106 so this memory has one reference that is a so the reference count goes to 1 now when we assign the variable b when we assign the value of a to the variable b the variable b also has the same reference to the memory address of 0x106 so the memory address of 0x106 now has a reference of two variables so the reference count goes to 2 for the last time let's assign the variable c with the value of a the value the variable c is now going to have the same memory address that is 0x106 so the memory address 0x106 
106 now has three memory references. So the reference count goes to three. Now if we assign null to variable c, the reference count goes to two because c is no longer being referenced to the variable 0x106. So this, this memory now has only two references that is a and b. So the reference count goes to two. Similarly, if we assign the variable b with the value of null, the reference count goes to zero. Memory address of 0x106 now only has a reference to a, b and c are null, so the reference count goes to 1. Now if we apply null, sorry, if we assign null to the variable a, reference count goes to 0, but the variable a now has a different address, null has a different address, null has an own, null has a own address of its null as a different address, that is, that is it has its own address inside of the memory. We shall see this scenario in the coding section but as of now let's keep it simple null simply means nothing is assigned to that variable and the memory address can be pointed to any of the thousands or millions of objects that's in the memory heap just because the variable a isn't destroyed this is reference counting now let us have a look at the naive reference counting garbage collection and garbage collection is the third stage of the memory life cycle what is garbage collection Garbage collection is the process of making space in a computer's memory by removing data that is no longer required to use. In this example, when we removed the reference of A, B and C, these are no longer required for us. So the garbage collection is going to see the reference count and if the reference count is zero, it's going to destroy all these variables A, B, C inside of the memory heap. Garbage collection is the process of making space in a computer's memory by removing data that is no longer required to use. As soon as the reference count goes to zero, JavaScript memory manager destroys that object making space in the memory. But, but this is a naive reference counting algorithm and it has a problem. We shall go through the problem after the coding lecture which is coming up next. The next video can be skipped but I highly recommend you to go through the next video because we are going to see a special case where the value of a is assigned with the value of null and null can be pointing to many different objects inside of the memory and that, va and that value can have many reference counts and we can and we'll see that in the next video that is in the next coding video but if you feel like i don't want to see what's happening behind the hoods of python how the reference counting works instead of python then you can skip the next lecture but i recommend you to go through the next lecture because we are going to cover an important aspect okay don't skip the next lecture thanks for watching this video see you in the next video hello Welcome to this video. In the last video, we spoke about how if the variables is referenced to other variables, the reference count of that variable increases. Here, we had a variable of a with the value of 1, 2, 3, that is an array with the values of 1, 2, 3, and it was pointing to the memory address of 0x106. So, this memory address had a memory reference of one variable, so the reference count became 1. And as soon as we assign the variable B with the variable A, now the variable B was pointing to the same memory address that of A. So the memory address 0x106 now had two memory references with it, the variables A and B. So the reference count became 2. Now when we assign the variable C with the variable A, variable C was referring, referencing to the same memory address that of A. So the memory address 0x106 now has three memory references that is the variable A, B and C. So the reference count goes to 3. As soon as the reference count goes to 0, JavaScript memory manager destroys that object making space in the memory. In this video, we'll have a quick walkthrough using Python to calculate the number of references. To save time, I already have a Python file which is going to give us the output of the number of references. I am printing the reference count of the variable with the reference counting function which is defined here. The reference counting function takes in a parameter called address. The C types module takes in the ID that is the address of the variables and it spits out the reference count of that variable for us. Here we are passing in the address and we are returning the reference count number. Now when we print, okay, before printing 
let's see here we have a variable with an array one two three in python it's called as list okay here we have a variable with the values one two three inside of an array and when we print the id of a we get the reference count to be one let us see the reference count i am running the file python mem reference count okay we we can see that the variable a as a reference count of one and the address of the variable a is pointing to so and so address now when we assign the variable b with the value of a and when we print out we can see that the reference count of a now increases to two as said reference count of the variable a is two now when we assign the value of a to the variable c and when we print the reference count of the variable a we can see that the reference count of the variable a is 3 now let us remove the values c and b that is let us assign the values of none to the variable c and b and when we print the reference count of a now we can see that the reference count of the variable a is 1 here we are assigning c the value of none and b the value of none so c and b are no longer sharing the memory address that of a so we are getting the reference count of the variable a to be one now before assigning a to the value none let's assign a to a new variable a underscore id now let's assign the variable a none and let's pass in the address of a underscore id instead of a i'll tell you why in just a bit here we are passing the reference reference counting of a underscore id instead of a now when we let me clear the terminal and when we run the file we can see that the reference count of the variable a was one and now it became zero that is when we printed the reference counting of a underscore id that is a underscore id the a underscore id had the value of the id of the variable a that is the memory address of the variable a so when we printed the reference counting of a underscore id the value that is the reference count became zero cool you can see that the reference count of a underscore id is zero because a underscore id had only one shared reference and after assigning it none it became zero now we know that the reference count of a is zero and now if we pass in the address of a we'll see a strange behavior we have the address we have the value of none inside of the variable a now when we print the reference count of the id a that is the variable a we'll see a strange behavior here we get the reference count of the variable a is 2431 the reference count goes to some arbitrary number and the value stored inside of the address of the variable a changes to a different value in the last lecture i had told you that none takes a different place as a memory of its own inside of the memory heap and it can be pointed to millions or thousands of objects inside of the memory address and that memory address can have a variable which has a reference count of some arbitrary number and in our example it's 2431 we have no clue whatsoever to which value it's being matched to that value which has an address of a particular object might have shared references in our case it was 2431 the variables a underscore id in our example b and c are destroyed by the garbage collector because the reference count is zero in those cases i hope these practical examples are clearing up and making concepts much clearer thanks for watching this video see you in the next video where we shall continue our discussion on the drawback that naive reference counting garbage collector throws at us hello welcome to this video in the last lecture we had a look at how reference count increases and decreases we also saw what happens to the reference count when it goes to zero in our code after the reference count hit zero and after running it again the reference count went to 2431 this happened because we set the value to null and the variable now has no value and it points to one out of the million objects stored in the memory and the variable in that memory can have many shared references and in our example it was 2431 the value null as a place in the memory 
and it has a reference of 2431 in our example. The reference count can vary. The variable gets destroyed by the garbage collector when it's not being referenced to anything, that is, when its count is zero. In our example, variable a underscore id had a reference count of zero and that variable gets destroyed by the garbage collector. I told there was a limitation with reference counting algorithm. The algorithm, the algorithm we saw was the most naive garbage collection algorithm. In this video, we shall see what the limitation of reference counting algorithm is. Limitation with reference counting algorithm is when the variables have circular references. Let us see an example where circular references might occur. If you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, don't sweat it. We'll cover object-oriented programming in depth in the upcoming videos. Here we have class 1. There's an object with a key b and has a value of class 2 which takes in an argument of class 1. Here we have a key with we have a key b and a value of class 2 which is taking in an argument of this and this is referring to class 1 and hence the argument is class 1. And we have a class 2 with a key of a and has a value of a. The a is coming from the parameter a and has a value of class 1 because when we call 2 with an argument of this, this was being referred to class 1 and this is being sent as a parameter and this parameter is being assigned to the key a. Okay, cool. Now, when we create an instance of class 1 and when we create an instance and assign that instance to the variable my class, we get a memory address of class my, when we get a memory address of my class and that my class as a place inside of the memory and my class now as an address with the value which we get after running our class 1. Now when we run class 1 inside of our constructor method we can see that key b as a value which calls 2 with an argument of class 1 and now 2 executes and inside of 2 we have an object with key a and a value of class 1 which was passed in as a parameter. We know that class 2 as an address of its own and class a as an address of its own. So when we console log the address of 2 inside of the constructor of class 2, we get the address of class 2 which is 0x105c1b198. And when we console log the address of the key a, we get the address of class 1 which is 0x105b160 because parameter a is referring to class 1. Now after executing class 2 we go back to class 1 and when we console log the address of 1 we get the address which is 0x105cb160 and when we console log the address of b that is this one when we console log the address of a sorry we get the address of class b that is 0x105c1b198 because the key b is referring to class 2. This is known as circular reference. If you are still dicey about what's happening, please post a question in the Q&A section. And if you are confused about what's happening with the classes, don't sweat it. We shall cover object-oriented programming in depth in the upcoming videos. We'll touch on circular references in the object-oriented programming module. Okay, here class 2, here we have class 2 with the memory address of 0x105c1b198 which is the memory address of class 2 and 0x105c1b160 which is the memory address of class 1 and instead of class 1 we have a memory address of 0x105c1b160 which is the memory address of class 1 and the memory address of class 2 is b with the value 0x105c1b198. You can see a pattern here. These two zigzag crosses are having the same memory addresses. Here the value of a has a memory address of class 1 and here the class 1 has a memory address of 0x105. Both are same. Here class 2 has a memory address of 105c1b198 and inside of class 1 we have the memory address of 0x105c1b198. Both are having circular references that is class 2 as a reference to class 1 and class 1 as a reference to class 2. This is the limitation. 
the limitation comes when the variable my class is set to null. The reference count is now 0. In the previous example, when the reference count went to 0, the other references that had the reference of that variable got destroyed too. But with circular references, when my class reference goes this one, when my class reference count goes to 0, object with key B and object with key A don't get destroyed because they share references with each other and garbage collector doesn't know what to do with them and it leaves them in the memory saying I'm not going to get involved in this mess. There are two objects in the memory sharing references with each other and I don't know how to delete them both. If only one object was referencing the other objects or variables I would have deleted the object and the objects or variables referencing that object that is the root object but but in this case, there are two and I am not going to get enrolled in the confused affair. But what about the discarded memory? They lie in the memory doing nothing and occupy space in the memory for no good cause. This results in memory leak. When we assign the variable my class with none, these two are lying in the memory because this wasn't destroyed by the garbage collector. Now what? Is it doing in the memory? It's doing nothing and occupies space in the memory for no good cause. This results in memory leak. What is a memory leak? Memory leak happens when a program fails to release a discarded memory. This causes issues in the performance. In the next video, we shall touch a bit on a different algorithm that modern, modern browsers use to destroy the objects which are unreachable. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.